on a cold September night in 1935. Beneath the ominous glow of the Kingsbury Run railroad tracks, the lifeless body of Edward Andrassy was found. His shocking state of dismemberment and the chilling precision of the act sent shock waves through the community. A lonely whistle echoes in the distance. The glow of a kerosene lamp pierces the gloom, revealing a grisly scene beneath the railroad tracks. The lifeless, mutilated body of a man in his mid-thirties is sprawled on the rough gravel. This is Edward Andrassy. A crowd gathers at the crime scene, drawn by the ghastly rumors. Cleveland policeman, a burly, seasoned officer, fights back the horrified crowd. His face is a mask of professionalism, but his eyes betray a hint of fear and disgust. The gruesome sight is unlike any murder case he has ever encountered. Under the shroud of the early morning fog, a tale of horror begins to unfurl in the heart of Cleveland. The cold precision of the act, the chilling state of Andrasi's mutilation, strikes fear into the heart of the community. Little do they know that this is only the beginning. This unfortunate soul stands as the ominous harbinger, the inaugural victim marked by the malevolent hand of the Cleveland Torso murderer. In the mid to late 1930s, in the heart of the United States, the city of Cleveland was gripped by a chilling wave of fear. A shadowy figure known as the Cleveland Torso Murderer was prowling its streets. His reign of terror spanned from 1934 to 1938, with 12 gruesome murders, each more horrifying than the last. Our victims were often drifters, people on the fringes of society, their identities lost to time. The killer's signature was decapitation and dismemberment, a level of brutality that baffled even seasoned investigators. As the body count rose, so did the panic, despite the best efforts of law enforcement. Led by famed safety director Elliot Ness, the killer remained elusive. Suspects were questioned, leads were followed, but the Cleveland Torso murderer slipped through the cracks every time. This case remains one of the most infamous and unsettling unsolved crimes in American history, a dark tale etched into the annals of true crime lore. Kingsbury Run was a place of despair, filled with hobos and drifters who were struggling during the Great Depression. It was the perfect hunting ground for a killer who preyed on the faceless and forgotten. The first victim was found in September 1935. The woman, believed to be in her mid-30s, was decapitated and her body was exsanguinated. Her identity, like many others, remains unknown. January 1936. A woman discovered parts of a woman's body neatly wrapped in newspaper and packed in two half-bushel baskets. The baskets were left alongside the Hart Manufacturing Building on Central Avenue, near East 20th Street. The rest of the remains, except the head, were recovered about 10 days later in a nearby vacant lot on Orange Avenue. As with victims number one and number two, the cause of death had been decapitation. In this case, however, the killer waited for rigor mortis to set in before disarticulating the rest of the body. Cleveland police used fingerprints to identify victim number three as Florence Palillo, a waitress and barmaid who at the time of her death resided at East 32nd Street in Carnegie, right on the edge of the Roaring Third. Over the next three years, the city would be plunged into a state of terror as more bodies were discovered, each bearing the horrifying signature of the Mad Butcher. The victims were decapitated and often dismembered leaving investigators with a grotesque jigsaw puzzle. Elliot Ness, famed for his role in capturing Al Capone, was the city's safety director at the time. He threw himself into the investigation, determined to stop this monstrous predator. 
Despite Ness's best efforts, the murders continued. The city was in panic. The killer seemed to be mocking the authorities, leaving his gruesome trophies in plain sight. As the years passed, the trail grew cold. The last known victim was found in August, 1938, but the shadow of the Mad Butcher would linger over Cleveland for years to come. The first suspect came to the forefront in 1939. Dr. Francis E., a veteran from World War I with a background in medical training, was brought into the limelight as a potential suspect. He was subjected to a series of polygraph tests administered by the very creator of the polygraph machine, Leonard Keeler. Despite failing those tests, no charges were brought against Sweeney. Legal and procedural complications along with Sweeney's connections to a powerful political family, made it impossible for Ness to secure a conviction. Disheartened but relentless, Ness continued his pursuit, even as his political star began to wane. His obsession with the case eventually cost him his job, and the Torso Murders case became an eternally haunting chapter in his story career. Over the years, other suspects emerged and other bodies were found, some even outside of Cleveland. Yet, no concrete evidence could ever be linked to any of these individuals, deepening the enigma of the Cleveland Torso murderer. Theories have abounded as to the identity and motive of the killer. Some believe the murderer may have had medical training given the precision of the dismemberments. Others ponder if the torso murderer was actually a torso murderess, a theory sparked by the large number of male victims. Despite the countless hours of investigation and speculation, the chilling case of the Cleveland Torso murderer remains as one of America's most macabre, unsolved mysteries, a grim reminder of a predator who vanished as suddenly as he appeared. As our journey into this dark chapter of Cleveland's history concludes, we are left with more questions than answers. Who was the Cleveland Torso murderer? While the case is officially unsolved, many believe the identity of the torso murderer of Kingsbury Run has been known since the 1930s. Mysterious Dr. X was investigated by the police and interrogated by Elliot Ness, but no physical evidence was found linking him to the crimes. Most likely, Dr. X was Francis Sweeney, an intelligent, skilled, and very troubled surgeon who lived near Kingsbury Run. Dr. Sweeney had the surgical know-how as well as access to facilities ideally suited for dismembering bodies. Despite a week-long interrogation by Elliot Ness and other high-level investigators, Sweeney never confessed. However, immediately after Sweeney committed himself to a sanatorium, the murders stopped. Why did he kill? And how did he manage to evade capture? The eerie specter of the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run continues to haunt us. A ghastly enigma lurking in our collective memory. <laughs>